here is the um, box that I did with the decoupage queen papers and I left the bottom mold unfinished because I wanted to show you how I do the finish with the um, the different artisan powders and um, the wax, the antique wax, the aging mediums, which is the dust of ages dusting powder that I love very much by Amy Howard and also her dark antique wax. And um, I also use clear wax, any clear decor wax would work. And the clear wax is really for um, the purpose of grabbing onto your aging dusty powders. And also um, it helps seal it, seal your molds a little bit. And um, you know, it's a really good medium to have for sealing and helping to grab your, your pretty powders and mediums. So this is the, um, the top of the box with the um, artisan powders, antique wax, rose gold wax, and um, the clear wax was put on here to embed and hold the powders. Also is what I did with the um, artisan powders before I started coloring the molds was I poured, I took a teeny, teeny little bit in this tiny quarter teaspoon and I put it in just a little medicine cup and put just like a teaspoon or so of water and I make like a watercolor with the artisan powder and then I just take a little artist brush and brush the color on and they're fabulous to use as watercolor. Um, I'll open this one. This is um, called Paris Rose. It's Memory Hardware by Frank Garcia from Prima Marketing. And it's just a nice little powder. So, and um, hi, Joy and Shannon. Thanks for bringing, for being here with me. And thanks for bearing with me while I got my act together. We had the camera in landscape and we thought it was gonna work like that, but it didn't work. So I don't know what I did wrong. I'm helpless with this technology. I had to go get my husband. So here's the Orleans taupe, which has really turned out to be a favorite color of mine. It's got a great vintage AG look to it. It's really good on so many things. And then Charlotte blush is a favorite also. And it actually is darker when you use it as a watercolor, really interesting color. So we're going to get moving. So we need to decoupage another box and we are using Rosie's postcards by Decoupage Queen. And um, this is the rice paper in size A4, which is um, 8.3 inches by 11.7 inches long. And it's a beautiful design, which I love because it has vintage script and type typography and it has like an aged crackled background and it has the pink roses and the Victorian woman and the old French postcard um, text as well. And it has like the little crown and a little bird image. I adore this paper so much. And then this one is a newer one that we carry. And um, this is called Shabby Roses. And I do believe I only had a couple of these and I am, I'm ordering more. So I wish I had more of these in store, but I was only able to get a few and um, I'm looking forward to having more. And this is actually in the A3 size. And this is 11.7 inches by 16 and a half inches long. And this has like shabby pale pink flowers, roses with um, a really pretty French script. I don't know if it's French script or English. Ah, it's an English script in the background with um, some scrolly kind of flourish design going through. So that's what we're gonna do on this other box that I've already painted. I use a white base to provide a good background for the designs on the papers to show. And I also painted the insides so that um, we can line them with paper. And I'm planning on lining them with this lace 
paper by decoupage queen and this is actually an a2 size which is 16 and a half by 23 inches long and unfold it and this is just like um it's called vintage lace yes this is vintage lace and i had only carried that in the small a4 size but now i have the larger sizes so And I have molds here ready for this box. And I don't know if I'll be able to get them all on because you know, they take a long time to set up, but I at least wanna show you how I do the papers on the box. And I also am gonna show you how to do the finish on these molds that are done. And for just your reference, this is um, Iron Orchid Designs Trimmings One Mold. Um, I think this mold has my favorite design, which is at the top. It's the one with the, it's like got like roses all along it. I really love that one. So that's what I used to do the molds because I thought the roses on the molds went with the roses on the papers. I thought that was beautiful. So, I put a materials list on my post about this live today and about this box that we're making. So those are there and if you have questions or need to find them, um, I can try to help you with that too. So just let me know. All right, let's get started. We're gonna paper this really quick and then we're gonna do the finish on those other molds. And let's see. So we're gonna start with the top of the medium size heart box. And I used a chalked, a chalky base paint by Rust-Oleum, and it's in linen, and it's called Chalked, and it's a really great paint. So this box is what I do, is I will lay it down on my design. And um, I'm gonna aim the camera down now so you guys can have a look, okay? So let me just move that really quick before I forget. And I'm so sad because I had a new stand that aims all the way down. And that's the one I couldn't get to hold it. Like something's wrong with it. But we're going to do this. So you tell me if that's good. Let me tighten it up. All right, let's see. Move out of the way. Maybe move this back a little bit. All right. Can you guys see okay? Is that all right? Is that better? Oh, no sound. Hmm. Let me see. Sound is good. Can you zoom in a little bit? So, let me see. I don't know if I can. Like I really need my honey here to help me with this stuff. Okay. Is that any better, Linda Baker? I have two Lindas here tonight. Are you good on the sound now, Linda Lynch? Oh, thank you, Linda Baker. I have two Lindas tonight. Okay. I hope that's better, guys. So sorry. <laughs> so I have technical problems today, and I was really, things were going so swimmingly before I started out. So I want to um, angle this heart so that it fits just between the, um, the borders of the paper. It, it really barely just fits. And if I put it like that, she kind of it kind of sticks off, sticks out, whatever. 
So if you corner the corner of the heart to the corner of the paper, it's kind of like that. And she'll be kind of like, let's see, put her like this. She'll be like this, like here's this side of the heart. So get my corner there. And that way it fits kind of like right to the edge, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna press around the sides and make like a, um, a line with your fingers so you know where you're gonna wet the paper to do like the wet paper tear cutting. I don't really like to do these straight edge cut because it um, the kind of torn edges blend better when you're decoupaging. And I'm sure you all know that. So you go all the way around your heart. And then I flip it over like that. And then I take a, a um, fine brush and I dip it in water. And I go around like this. Can you guys see okay? Aw, thank you, Linda Lynch. I'm so sorry about that. I was really worried I'd messed up the sound too. But I got these new lights to help illuminate my workspace better. And I really need to figure out how to place them better on this surface. And um, I got a new stand to hold the phone so the phone could be aimed down on the table. And um, there's this weird piece that you have to put on it. And we had it in landscape position because we couldn't figure out how to get it to hold in portrait. <laughs> so I don't know what I did wrong. And um, the other thing is I'm in my poor empty studio because it's under construction. And this is the good wall because this wall over here has been torn out and we had a really bad leak come in from the roof and a mold remediation company had to come in and tear down the wall, tear down all, tear out all the gross stuff. And now a contractor's coming in like a week and they're gonna tear down the whole wall inside out and rebuild it. And it's a whole thing. <laughs> So I'm a little lost right now with my stuff being everywhere. And I had to set up a makeshift table in here to, to do my lives and it drives me nuts. Like I want my, my space back with my real work table. We had to move everything out and we're gonna paint in here and it's gonna get a whole makeover. So I'm excited about that. It's time. So we're just going to tear all this off. It doesn't have to be perfect. And don't worry about if there's like an overhang or too much or too little because you can fix that with paint, aging medium, mediums, antiquing. You can always glue in little pieces if you have to. There's no absolute right or wrong way, honestly. Okay, set that aside. And these are my molds. I have a wet cloth over them to um, keep them moist. All right, so there she is. And she's gonna be in a little bit different position than this one was because I just wanted to try to fit all of it on there. But I think it's kind of pretty. And I am using um, Golden's, and I'll just put it under here like this, Golden, gel and it is the soft gel in matte and this goes on nice and smooth and i i really love it and i always keep this little cover part i just kind of keep it on there as an extra barrier to keep it fresh i don't know if it really helps but that's what i do so i wet my brush a little bit Put my paper towel. i'm going to move this out of the way So, my um, 
um, allergies are wild today. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> How are you? I've been trying to uh, keep up with you, girl. <laughs> you are amazing. You're like a, mach a creative machine. I don't know if you guys know Teresa B. DIY. Uh, she has a, a YouTube channel and she's on Instagram and Facebook and she does wonderful crafts and she is um, a chalk couture. Did I get that right, Teresa? I'm so sorry. My memory is not good sometimes. She's with Chalk Couture and she does all kinds of really pretty crafts and um, you should really check her out because you, she's so fun and positive and she does a lot of fun projects and she does collaborations with other creators. So you'll learn a lot from them. All right, so we're gonna place our um, paper on here. And you can actually lift it and move it just a little bit if you have to. It might absorb some of your your gel medium that you applied. But we have all our, almost all of our edges covered. So I gotta lift it again. I may have to put some more gel too. It's like sucking it up down here. I had it like a little, a little off there. It drives me nuts. Like I'm so picky, you know? And you gotta be careful because you don't wanna like make puckers and wrinkles when you move it around like that, like I'm doing. <laughs> All right, it's still sliding for me, that's good. It's so funny, I do this when I'm on my own and I know, and I'm not like live with people watching and I don't have all my problems. <laughs> like, that's just the way it goes. So I like to use my paint blade by Iron Orchid Designs. Um, I know I talk about these and I do I do sell these. I am an authorized IOD stockist, but I swear these are great. And I talk up a big game about these paint blades because I love them and I would totally buy them if I saw them somewhere. I mean, I did buy them actually, but I like to smooth my stuff out with these does a really great job and it doesn't like drag and snag on your stuff. So I would, you know, you need to put another coat on here, but is what I did on the other box, I stamped Iron Orchid Designs Rose Toile. Um, they have a couple of stamps on the Rose Toile stamp set and I type, I um, stamped Le Roses and then another little Frenchy stamp they had in there of text and um, I distressed it, you know, and but I'm not gonna do that on this one tonight. And um, you can always seal this and then add some IOD text transfers or something if you want. And I'll probably do that. So we're gonna put some gel over this later because I can't handle it when it's all wet and sticky. All right, so now on the side is what I do on the side is I just come along with my brush and I just sort of get that overhang and press it down so that it's not hanging off there because I want to put some paper around the sides of this heart. And it's already almost 7.30. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this to 8 o'clock. And I think that, you know, I can come and do a little video to finish some things on this tomorrow if I need to. But I, I mean, I know most of you know how to decoupage and, and stuff like that. So there, they're all sealed down, not going anywhere. Put that back in my water, cover this for now. So, This is the Shabby Roses, and this box is probably kind of big. Um, I used this size paper on my small box, and I actually had some left over. So is what you do is you take your sheet of paper, 
and you put it, you just sort of line it up and just see how it's going to fit and how much you need to fit, okay? So I can get it from the back to almost around to the other side. So I know I'm going to need to cut here and take these pieces and continue them around here. So I have enough with this paper, okay? And then the pieces from this uh, Rosie's postcards that are left, I'll, I'll use some of them in the box and um, I will use some of this to go around this lid. So, we're gonna do the body first. That way I'll have the scraps to work with for the lid. Do the big stuff first, you know, I guess is what I'm thinking. So, you take this and you wanna make sure you're not including your border because you don't wanna have the border there. Then just wrap it around, fold it over, make your lines, and then you know where to do your water stuff, you know? So, get my brush for my water. There we go. So I'm just gonna go along the border and get rid of my, my border. You gotta work fast because it starts drying and absorbing. Right there. And I'm gonna do this border here. On Decoupage Queen's papers, there is a border that runs along the 11 and a half or the the shorter edge and it tells you the um, item number, the title of the design, and it has the Decoupage Queen name and logo and the Decoupage Queen website on it. And um, if you're ever looking for one of her papers and I don't have it, um, you can check her retailer locator at decoupagequeen.com or I can always reach out to a, a Decoupage Queen retailer and see if they have something for you. I do that for people occasionally, you know. Sometimes, you know, we might have an extra paper and it's not listed on the website and so you never know. Somebody may have something it just wasn't on there for some reason. So always ask, do you like the gel medium best for decoupage? I used to use Mod Podge years ago and I didn't, I started transferring images because you know, you can use gel medium to do laser printed image transfers. And I know I've talked about that on some of my lives and I've actually transferred like the Jane Austen silhouette, if you remember. And the thing that I learned about a cheaper brand of gel medium versus an artist, a good brand like Golden or Liquitex. Um, it's, they are better quality and they transfer the image better. Also, as they age, you don't get a yellowy cast like you do with the um, other cheaper brands. And I don't wanna knock that brand because look, you know, it is great. It does have its purposes, you know. I think maybe for, um, maybe putting it, decoupaging with Mod Podge and putting it underneath something that the yellow cast may not be showing through as it ages is probably great. But I stopped using it because of that. And um, this one is, I just love it. It's my favorite. I've used it for years and um, I have never gone back. 
It's not as fluid and liquidy as some. Um, some some artisan gels by Golden are thicker because they have different purposes and different uses. But this one specifically, Golden's soft gel medium or their regular matte gel are both fabulous for creating transparency, for building up texture, to adding to paint, um, sealing, decoupaging. There's more uses that I can't even think of right now, but um, you get a lot out of this pot and it goes a long way. You get your money's worth. And I thought that with the, um, the Mod Podge, it didn't transfer the images as brilliantly as golden. So I hope that helps you. All right, let's hurry up. There we go. I really um, wanted to show you all how I do the finishes on the molds because I think the finishes on anything and the details of it make your project. I mean, those kind of details are everything, I think, for, for projects. All right, I hope I didn't do that too narrow. <laughs> I may have. But that's okay, because the molds are gonna hide part of it. So what you wanna do, this is this has text, so you wanna make sure you have it the right way so that it's not upside down. So, and you make sure it fits. And look, if you cut something a little short, and you know you're gonna cover it with mold trim at the bottom, you can always raise your paper and you're good. So never, never, you know, panic or anything. So this is good here on this side. And I even have a little extra there. So we're gonna do the next piece and we're just gonna use this piece as our template. I'm trying to keep my stuff out of your view. All right, so we're just gonna start here. Just kind of fold it over. Make quick work of it, you know? Here we go. I'm gonna follow my line. Easy peasy. <laughs> so did you guys catch my little video tutorial where I talked about using this gel medium to apply the IOD paint inlays? Did any of y'all catch that? Linda Lynch, I am there with you. Eliminates the use of, oh yeah, definitely Linda for sure. All right, let's get my gel and get this paper on. So, I hope that helped with the showing you how I do the paper to get it on the box. I'm sure a lot of you don't even need to know that, <laughs> but you never know. We all have ways of doing stuff and we learn from everyone. I've learned so much from watching other people, you know? Look, I go in both directions when I'm applying the gel to the surface, but when I'm like applying it to a decoupage paper, I try to go in smooth, gentle strokes and go one way and start from the middle outward. That's kind of the rule of thumb. All right, so we wanna make sure this is not upside down text. There we go, okay. So we're gonna plant this here. You bring it on over, pull it kind of taut. Gonna smooth it as I go with my paint blade that I'm madly in love with. <laughs> it's 
So my poor husband isn't feeling good today. I don't know, I hope he's okay. We went to Ikea and met with a design planner um, to design my new office for like the storage and the cabinets and all that stuff. They, I don't know if you knew, I, we just discovered that Ikea has room design planners and you make an appointment and you go in there and you take the dimensions of your space and you kind of draw it out and then they put it into software on a computer and they literally can put all the stuff in place that you need and it was really cool. So, um, oh, I'm, I'm excited, but you know, some of their stuff is not available. They're, they're experience the shipping supply chain crisis just like everyone else and they're having a hard time getting stuff like the frames for mounting cabinets on walls are a big backup problem they're backlogged so i don't know when i'll get all that stuff done i'm gonna have to make do until <laughs> everything comes in and the contractor's finished Okay, so here's the other thing. We are creating a seam on the side of the box. I mean, I really could have tried to plan it out where both seams met here or back here, which is what I did with the smaller box. But, um, you know, it wastes paper and I didn't want to waste any more paper. So I am going to take antiquing mediums and I'll be blending this and nobody will know. We hope. I kind of tore my paper right there. Darn. So the other thing I can do is I can take another piece of um, decoupage paper artwork and kind of cover it. So that's also a way out of hiding your seams and your boo-boos. You just improvise. Um, this is a set of three paper mache heart shape boxes. There's a small, a medium, and a large, and they are from, I got them from Hobby Lobby a while back. And I know, I've noticed that even paper mache has been getting hard to find. So pumpkins in the fall were, were like non-existent. You could hardly find a decent sized paper mache pumpkin this past fall. Did y'all notice that? All right, so we're just gonna go right in like this, just a little to the right of the actual crease. So we have enough coverage and just tear that out. Oops. Get back there. All right. Let's move that out. All right, there you go. So that's going to be really, really pretty. And this one is all messed up. <laughs> I have a bad bubble right there, guys. I'm going to um, see if I can work it out without tearing it up. And that's another thing with decoupage, you know, once you put your medium, it, um, the wrinkles work themselves out as it dries. Like, and having a little bit of a wrinkle or crease is not the worst thing, you know? They do settle. I think I need some there. All right. I'm so picky about stuff. Okay, so there's that. The letters are right. We're gonna set this aside. So on here, for the side of the box, I have this piece left. 
and I have enough to go around the perimeter. So we're just gonna fold this in half. Okay, make a crease. Go over the tear thing again. I'm gonna have to check and see if I can get this shabby roses paper in a larger size. This is um, A3, did I say? I'm not even sure. Some of them come in all the sizes and some don't. And I'm still learning. I'm, I'm a relatively new retailer. I think I came on board with Jack Bosch Queen in the late spring. All right, so we're gonna start here and it's gonna take it all the way around right here. And then this piece goes here. Now something else I would do is if you thought of it, you would put this first on the side and then you can wrap around your top piece and um, you can hide your edges if that's something that is important to you. So since this is so long, I'm gonna start both pieces at the back and that way I can trim them and make them come to a point. So that works. Let's see, make sure my text is, there's hardly any on here. There we go. So. I'm gonna make sure I leave a little bit of the tissue decoupage rice paper kind of, um, sticking up over the edge, only because I don't want there to be too little as I go around, because it curves. So there you go. And then the, the mold trim is gonna go like along this part at the bottom of the lid. So we're almost done with this piece. And there we go. So we're gonna make that go here. See the, when you hit the curves, it kinda Gonna have to manipulate it, you know? But if you're not covered all the way at the bottom, remember the molds go there and they'll hide any paper mache that peeked out. But I do try to completely cover it if I can. See how it's like, it's have to like kinda reposition it, drives me nuts. So, there we go. All right, so, now, just wanna tear these off right here. blend it over. Okay, so these edges here are gonna um, be 
torn off around the top. So they're gonna get that whole water method. This is tricky here because you want to make sure you don't tear your decoupage paper from the sides that you just covered. Ask me how I know. There we go. So you just sort of need to hold your thumb or finger along your edge when you're tearing and that sort of holds down, keeps you from tearing beyond your edge. That helps a lot, you know. Get this side. So you guys who offered your sympathies for me, for my little dog, Stella, that died, thank you so much for your sweet thoughts and your kindness. I really loved that dog, and she was with me for 16 years since she was seven weeks old, and she was a cockerpoo, and she was just the sweetest, best dog, and we went through a lot in this family in our lives and she was by our side and I was really sick for several years with um, cancer and she stayed with me and laid with me and it was like she was taking care of me. So she meant the world to me and I'm, I'm pretty darn heartbroken that she's gone. I, But you know, she was able to, to pass peacefully away right in her bed, right near me. And that's all I could ask for because I didn't want her suffering and to be traumatized by some vet or something. And I just, um, I'm really thankful for that. So thank you guys. Do you ever use the nail emery board to get the edges great? I actually use this, um, sanding block. If, um, it has different sides, some are finer and softer and some are coarser. And I do, but it can be a little rough on the paper. So is what I do is I take my gel and I go around those torn edges. And honestly, it it um it literally kind of melds the fibers into the other paper you already laid down, and when it dries you can't even really tell. And the other thing is, if, if you think that you need to fine tune your torn edges that you worked over the edge here, after you've done your decoupage, decoupage gel on them, see how, I don't know if I can get closer for you, but I'm showing you how they have smoothed right in and melded right into the other paper. So is what I do also to fine tune this edge after this decoupage gel dries, I'm gonna go in with my antiquing wax or my color wax or whatever antiquing medium of my choosing. And you can hide things with aging mediums and paint and color waxes. Cause I like to make everything look kind of old, you know, like see here's an edge that is fibery and kind of sticking up. So if you watch with this gel, you just go like this and you literally can just meld it down 
it's it's like a miracle. <laughs> that is the beauty of rice paper, I gotta tell you. It just goes on so well. I just love it. If you if you try to sand it, it will make it a little more fibery and fuzzy. So I really recommend putting it down with um, your gel. See, look how smooth that is now. No more fibers. So, you know, if you have a lot of piece of paper hanging over, you could you could you could sand it off, but I just tear mine off. Whoops, I just messed up this side with my finger. It's wet. Okay, gotta put that down now. Let that dry. So while those dry, I'm gonna start showing you how I did the mold, okay? And um, before I do that, I'm gonna just apply So we're gonna just apply a couple of clay molds, fresh molds, onto the bottom of this box. So I can show you how I did those before I show you the finish. So these are fresh. And I also wanted to talk about joining your mold. So when you have a corner like this, and you're gonna have another mold to meet you want to butt them up and kind of let the clay overlap. Like don't bring them right to the absolute corner like that. Make them kind of like they're overlapping a little bit and you just sort of kind of squeeze them together. But do that, add your glue first and glue them so that when they start drying, they don't pull apart so far and make such a big crack. Okay, there, there's a trick to making your corners and points with your clay stay good and together. So, whoops, <laughs> I'm slinging my glue. So I just turn my mold over and I'm using Tight Bond Quick and Thick Multi-Surface. And I put a generous helping on there. And I'm going to get the glue on both of these. Get it ready. And um, the other thing I do is I use this nice delicate surface masking tape to hold them on if needed. And I meant to bring that in here with me and I forgot. So I use a brush to brush the glue on my mold. And you want to go all the way to your edges so there's good coverage and there's no way for the, as they dry, you don't get gaps. You want the mold grabbing on all over. <laughs> my brush, this brush has like debris in it. Okay. I get this one. Okay, I'm gonna park this up here. Can y'all see okay? It's probably better when using regular paper. You mean um, rice paper versus like decoupage tissue or decoupage paper? Is that what you meant, Linda Lynch? Aw, thank you for your kindness about Linda. I'm sorry about your golden. Those are such sweet dogs too. I have a piece of paper here that's like misbehaving. We're just gonna glue over it. Okay, so you wanna scooch these up together, okay? So can you see how I'm doing that? Here's the point of the box and I'm moving them 
overlapping. And I'm just gonna kind of, and you may lose a little bit of your shape at the, at the corner, but that's okay. And you just take your, your nails, or you can take, is what I do, is I kind of like go in and make little dents and manipulate the clay to join the corners together. And I try to fine tune them. And you know, you're gonna be putting aging mediums and, and wax and dusty aging and to hide, you know, if you think it's too funky or something, but just squeeze them in together, okay? My, my clay is very wet and sticky still. <laughs> That's good. The other thing is having fresh molds that are pliable to go around curves and corners is, is a key. So you wanna make sure your mold isn't too far down your box. Leave a, leave a teeny little bit of a, a box edge, you know, on there. Mine are sliding like crazy. And you wanna go around and just gently take your hand and press and like press the bottom seam of the mold. Make sure they're even. And if you see little pockets, press them down gently. You want a good seal so that when they're drying, they have less cracking and funkiness going on. And then is what I do is as I keep checking on them as they're drying, and if I see a crack forming, I go in with um, little teeny, teeny bits of clay and water, and I make like a little clay slurry, and I caulk the crack or the gap or the hole with it. And I sometimes use little straight pens, or I use the little edges of my paintbrushes, and I um, fix it that way. And then if they're dry overnight and they're, they're very dry and I see a crack, I do the same thing. I go in with water and clay and make like a little mixture and just caulk it with that and also tight bond glue. I add glue just to be sure. And it works like a charm. In fact, I fixed three cracks on this smaller box that I made. And I'll show you. See if you can. So let's get that one. So that's how I put these on, and I hope that helps you out. I'm sure some of you know are great with mold. So then we're gonna cut another piece. We're gonna take another one, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of gonna sit this one on top of this one a little bit and smash it down with that one, okay? And then with this one where the crease is back here, I go in with like an implement and I just sort of gently keep tamping it into the crack and I hold it like this and I give it plenty, I like kind of smush this part inward to give it a little extra length that I tucked in there so that when it's drying, it's not gonna pull away from this crease of this heart. And that's how I do that one. So, and we're, let's see, it's 8.02, I'm already out of time. So let me just show you really quick. I'll just take a few minutes and show you how I do that finish. And let me just sit this aside. Make sure those don't slide everywhere. All right, so here we go. This is not hard to do at all, okay? So you take your artisan powder, okay? You take your little your little cup, and is what I did is, I just did like a teeny, teeny bit of powder, like not, I mean a 16th of a <laughs> teaspoon maybe. Or you could do like, an eighth or more, it just depends on how much you need. And then you don't need much water, okay? 
I'm just gonna take my cup and you don't need much water at all, okay? You just make like a little muddy And you know, the more powder you put, the richer and the kind of the more color you'll get. So you just, and this is gonna be kind of wet on your mold. So anyway, I was trying to tell you, I fixed the crack back here and I fixed a crack here today. And I think there was another one. Oh, back here. That one I didn't do such a good job, but this is your, the base of your, see, it literally is like a watercolor. The Frank Garcia Memory Hardware Artisan Power Powder by Prima Marketing. So, and you just want a brush that can get in there and all your little nooks and crannies. And if you don't, don't worry about it because you're going to go in with um, dark wax and then you're also going to go in with your aging powders. And you can even take your artisan powder that you use to make a watercolor and apply those dry, which I did to this. So... You just do that. You paint along and then you take this one and give me a little bit of water. Don't need a lot of water. And I just do a little bit of this um, Charlotte blush color. Probably put too much. And you go in with your Charlotte blush over your Orleans taupe artisan powder that you just painted on. And, um, you blot it, you know, wipe off your excess. And it takes off some of it, but you just go back in. And see, this one is a little, um, a little too wet, so I'm gonna make it a little more powdery. You can dab it on your towel. So if you add too much water, it's a little runny. So you just have to gauge it and figure out what works best for you. So that goes in there like that. And then I just wipe it off. And is what I did when I was doing this is I um, took the heat gun and I just dried it. Like if you're in a hurry, you can just try to blow dry it because it dries really fast. And if you don't like some of your, the white of the clay showing through your artisan powder paint, you can add more, but also you can add dry powder and color wax and it covers up the white clay part too. So that dried pretty darn fast. Some of it's still wet in the, the crevices. So, the name of the products. So, I listed them on the post where I posted a picture with the live event, but I'm happy to tell you. So, this is um, Prima's Memory Hardware by Frank Garcia, and this is called Charlotte Blush, the one that is kind of a pale rose pink. And then this one, that was that taupey antique color, is called Orleans Taupe. It's fabulous. It's like a um, 
neutral. I have a plenty of these in my shop. And um, I think they may be like $8. I can't, don't remember. I'm sorry. So there's that one. This one is called Paris. Um, I had to use the lid. This is called Paris Rose. And this one is... It's not, I mean, it, I want to say it has almost an apricot tone. It's darker than it looks, though, when you apply it. They, these colors are interesting. This is um, Art Alchemy. This is Finnebear. She's an artist for Prima. And this is Art Alchemy Metallic Wax. And some come in these pots. But a lot of them, a lot of them they redid the way they package these, and they're in tubes now. So this is the rose gold that you see on top of here. And um, so I'm gonna go in to this one that I just painted and I'll show you, um, let me get my wax brush. I cover my brushes that have wax with um, masking tape to keep the wax from drying out too much. So, and it keeps the brush a little more pliable. And you can heat it up in your hand and warm up the wax that dried on there too. But I try to wash them after I use them. So, let me move that out of the way. This, like you could take a brush and go in with your dry artisan powder and it's um, gonna get in there nicely too. And as you can see, I'll go on a whiter part, like right here, and you can see how that's, you know. And then you just tap it off. So you can do that. And then, um, but the, the other thing about this is you really need to apply your, your clear wax or your dark wax to grab your dry artisan powder. And... Mine's kind of holding in there only because it's wet, but it's, you have to apply your, um, your wax. So here is my antique wax, my dark wax. And I'm gonna go in and just get a good little coating on there and dab around. And you know, it's a preference. You dab around or you saturate it, however much you want it to look. And then you can take a soft cloth or I'm using a paper towel because I don't have my soft cloth here. <laughs> so you put that in there and you darken it. And, um, then you can also go in with um, clear wax, which I love to do because it, um, the Annie Sloan brand of, um, this is called chalk paint wax, but I use it on my decoupage, my paper mache, my painted wood. It's really versatile. So it's a good creamy wax, very creamy. A lot, a little bit goes a long way. So you just embed it into your mold really well, okay? And it also darkens your colors a little bit. And then you can take your, um, artisan powder, dry artisan powder, and apply more and see how that, it helps cover those white specks that were showing through the mold. And you can do that like, you can do like your Orleans toe color at random, okay? Depending on how much of coverage of that color you want. Okay, and then just kind of wipe off your excess. Look at all that dark wax I got stuck on there. <laughs> Looks like poop. 
And um, so then you wanna take your Charlotte Blush Pink Artisan Powder and go over. You're just sort of building up and blending these aged, um, this aged look and texture on the rosy molding trim. And it's just amazing. Like it's, so it's coming together as you can see versus this one, we can compare the two. So as you can see, they're coming together. Oh, look, see, there's a crack. I have to fix that crack. <laughs> That's how it is with clay. All right, so now you're gonna apply your metallic wax. You don't have to use rose gold. I hate to tell you that I ran out of this in my store. I couldn't order more and I need to see if they have it back in stock and then I'll get it in. But I have other fabulous colors. Um, so you just take a little brush, you get a little helping of your rose gold. And I don't know if the camera is going to pick up the metallic of this, but, um, and if you can tell, but it just really finishes this. And, and the thing that I do on the final detail is I put the Dust of Ages by Amy Howard for an, a nice oldie antique look. Okay. So. And I'll go in and tweak it, but I wanted to show you guys. So there you have it. That's how you achieve that finish that was in the photo for the live. And one more detail, and that is the Dust of Ages by Amy Howard. This is like grayish brown, dirty, dusty kind of dust. Just what it, just what it sounds like it is. So, whoops, I think I have, I have one more br good brush left. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, just old, dusty, dirty powder. And you're just gonna put it on here and you're gonna dab it in and it's messy, it's powdery. And you know, I would put it on like a paper plate under it or a, a piece of paper and cat capture the stuff that falls off and put it back in the jar. <laughs> so there's that. And then you just tap it off. And then I would take a dry brush that you don't mind getting funky. And let me wipe that off. And you just sort of brush off the excess if you don't want all of that on there. And then if you think, is what I do is I go back in with the Metallic Rose Gold by Finnebear's Art Alchemy from Prima. And I go back in and I touch up more of the rose pink metallic if I think that my aging dust made it a little too dull. You know, I mean, I want this to look old, but I also want it to have a little bit of a, a sparkle here and there. And that's how I did it. Did I, was that good? Like, oh yeah, you think, yeah, yeah, I think you did order the tote for me. So was I able to explain how I did the finish on the molds? Oh, molds okay, guys, is that? Was I okay letting you know how to do that? I really wanted to let that shine through tonight. Okay, Linda, good night. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I hope everything helped, and I appreciate you being here. I'm going to um, shut it down now, and um, thank you so much. Have a good night.